and my name is Vince McIntyre. I'm 67 years old. I was born in the west of Ireland. I've lived here since 1979, 30 years later, still here. It seems like um, a lot of work to people. Most people in the, today's world, they don't have time for all that effort. And uh, I've got used to it. You have to have the discipline to get up in the morning when you have to. You have to put up with uh, discomfort. And then you have to see what you're doing as being part of your survival. When I was probably two years old, my father was out mowing oats with a scythe, and my mother was out, you know, picking up the sheaves and tying them, and they were making stooks. And she left me bedded down on the one of them stooks. And the sun turned blue. It was an eclipse. We seen an eclipse. And I remember the look on my mother's face, the fear of looking at the sky and seeing uh, that maybe this was the end of the world or something. And that instilled something in me. When I come to Canada first, me and my sister and brother, we went to work for this Dutch family. We worked on all these different things, picking peas or strawberries or tomatoes and uh, um, making hay and we, all this stuff. It was very interesting. Eh? And then we moved away from that part of Ontario and we went to work in a market garden closer to Toronto and that was already being industrialized. It was like long rows of like one thing, like green onions, like a three ton truck load of Dutch sets would come in, we had to plant all of them, you know. And we didn't get to go around to the summer cottages to help the farmer deliver and sell to the summer cottages. All this was cut out. We were just robots. And uh, that's when I uh, began to hate it. I began to hate farming. And I swore I would never do it in my life again. When you have that experience and you decide you want to get away from it, for somebody to go back like I don't, it's pretty rare. I started out wanting to make lots of money. I went and worked in the Arctic and ran big machinery and worked long shifts. I'd worked on boats and stuff a lot. I worked in mines and uh, logging and all that, and it's brutal. I remember thinking, this work that I'm doing is totally meaningless to me, you know. And my experience with the Dutch farmer was so beautiful, and the people were so kind and positive, and they weren't just like stressed out about the work or anything like that. Back then, rather than being playing and doing other stuff. But a few events in my life happened to make me realize, hey, that, that was a good life. And now that I appreciate that I had them experiences because they give me endurance. Working from the heart and working with a sense of freedom is important. Eh? If you have a real life, you end up doing stuff that become really important to you. To me, the biggest tragedy is that there's people today with, that they don't know why they're alive. They don't know why they're on this earth. It leaves people helpless. 
far as society is concerned, it's all about fun. And what we do is fun. And when you're on the land and you're farming, your life is full. And it's almost too full. And there's never enough time. Yeah. I've never been really big in doing stuff for myself. If it's to take care of my own needs, I'm, I'm totally lazy. So what motivates me is working with other people. People come into my life that, uh, that I, I've worked with, uh, they're my heroes. Yeah, we have to have our heroes. We have to see the good in humans, eh? And that's the way I find the good in humans, the people I work with. I find out who they are and what they're made of. And I might seem harsh on people and hard on people, and I am, and I'm never going to be different. Because this isn't something that you might play at, you know, because I don't play at it, you know. To me, life is do or die, and then, then you're living.